Welcome to the You Can Man podcast, episode 31. I'm Josh. I'm Tim. And I'm Dave. And on this week's episode, mm, power tools. <laughs> <laughs> I think it needs to be more, mm. Okay. Welcome back to the You Can Man Show, where we believe what one man can do, you can do as well. This week, we are talking power tools, and we're going to give our rundown of some of our favorite power tools. But first, let's do a little check-in, see how everybody's week has been. Dave, Josh, how's it been going? It's been pretty good. Uh, Braves clinched the NL East. That was awesome. So I went to the last home game of the year today. Wanted to take my four-year-old son. He's been wanting to go. He's been to a game before, but we wanted to take him again. And so we took him today, had a great time. Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a great game because the Braves lost, but whatever. Um, something I wanted to ask you guys about, have you been in the situation where, where one of your kids says something in public and you just like immediately shudder and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he, he or she just said that. Mm. I, because can't, I can't think of it. It happened specific. to me today. Okay. okay? So... We park, we go to the game, we park, and there's a shuttle from the lot that we parked at. And we go and we get on the shuttle. And it's a it's one of these shuttles where there's two it's a little bus and two seats on one side and two seats on the other side of the aisle, right? So I sit down at the window, next to the window. My wife sits down next to me, and my son is sitting on her lap. Four-year-old son. And we're waiting for the shuttle to like fill up, right? And so people are getting on, shuttles filling up. Then this guy walks on and he was a he was a large, a large individual. He's a big guy. Okay. And my son straight up goes, as he walks up the stairs and sits down right next to us, right next to us, my son very <laughs> loudly declares, he's really fat. <laughs> oh no. It was more no. like he's because he can't say his his L's. He goes, he's he's willy he's willy fat. <laughs> no. So loud. And I was there just like, go. oh, there you go. You know, pe- people know kids. They do, I but mean, but that like that's you that, can't say that, that's right? An indictment on you. And for sure. we were all in a very small contained <laughs> area, and so we had to ride on the bus with this gentleman uh, for you know the next fifteen minutes. I think that's when you just don't say anything. Well, we and didn't then, say anything. And then I, you say, then obviously you make you make the correction to the child. Well, after we, I, but. well, very quietly and very sternly <laughs> told him, "Look, dude." We don't talk like that, okay? You can't say that kind of stuff. And then I just stared at the bus drivers, the back of their head, for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah, I feel like I think I had a situation, a similar situation, now that you've uh, reminded me. We were at the uh, haircut place at the barber shop, and a large man uh, was going, he was waiting next to us in the chairs that face the barber chairs. It was his turn. He gets up, walks past us to go sit in a barber's chair, and... My older son, who was probably only three at the time, he's doing math <laughs> on this chair because he's, he turns to me and he goes, I don't think he's going to fit in that chair. <laughs> Something to that effect. Not as well spoken, but yes. I was luckily it wasn't with an earshot of anyone yeah. else. And I was like, wow. OK, <laughs> let's not talk about that here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That's you don't you don't know what's going to happen with them. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Today, I uh, posted on Instagram for the basically the first time. Instagram stories, I should say. Okay. On the You Can Man. Well, Instagram. you mean actual videoing of yourself, of your work that you're doing. So, yeah. And you've posted plenty of times Yeah, I've before. posted before, but not on an Instagram story. So, you folks out there in You Can Man podcast land, check out our Instagram stories. We're going to try to do a little more of that. I worked on a under deck privacy screen. Uh, to conceal, I need to give the purpose for this. Because, and Josh, before I forget, yeah. you need to add that to the highlights. Yeah, I was going to say that and wasn't so you people need, can yeah, yeah. always see it. Ooh. You know, okay. make it clear, well, brother. I'm a rookie move. It's a rookie move. Yeah. So I did this because, and this idea came on this week. My wife and I were like, "This is what we need because I want to shed." I've said it a thousand times on this show, but those ain't cheap, right? No, and. I'm like, I could build, I could build one. I could build a small one, like eight by 10. Right. And she's like, you will not be happy with that. So let's just wait until you can go all out on your shed, do it right. I was like, agree. 
but my lawnmower takes up a whole parking spot in my yep. garage. So I am moving the lawnmower under the deck. I'm going to get a cover for it. It, it hurts me because it's the most money I've spent on one tool probably ever. It's like cost as much as my trailer and I don't like to keep machinery outside. Yeah, yeah. But this is our this is our temporary fix. I spent 350 bucks on a privacy screen as opposed to thousands. Not a on prefabricated when you built, no, Josh, because built we, it. Josh, I walked up, I walked up, I brought some over to your house to drop it off and uh I walked up while you were in the middle of building this and I was like this is genius. This this is oh, thanks, buddy. this solves a I mean, problem. I was just going to say look man, ain't nobody going to care in the neighborhood. You could have just parked it right in the front lawn. I would care because I, my my lawnmower is <laughs> broken and I would have stolen it. Yeah, every time I mean when we when we moved into our house, the front of it was like basically boarded up for months and months and months. And I always felt bad because Tim and his family, they're the ones that have to see what goes on <laughs> in <laughs> my yard. <laughs> if you have a lawnmower parked in your yard, that's worse than a car on blocks in your yard, I feel like. Yeah, it so is. So it's better than, because well, you're kind of, you are kind of. Your lawnmower is movable. It like, is. You could get that out you of the way. You can push it out of the way pretty easily. Yeah, I agree. That's what I did this weekend. And we're going to try to do more projects like that. All right. On the Instagram stories. I've got I, uh, one more thing. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Go sorry. ahead. No. Go ahead. Do you want? Is it a? Is it a news item? Because I've got a news item. No. Okay. Then you. Tim go. was taking us out. I of was the... just gonna say, keeping up. Everybody posted on my running. I've I've kept up with it. Yeah. He has running every other day. Fantastic. Well, taking Sundays off. He's posting um, proof. He's texting us proof. So yes. We can see so it. I ran two. Well, equivalent. Not like a race, but I ran two five Ks this past week. Hey oh. That's so, huge. That's pretty big for me. That's yeah. Going from zero to that mileage is a lot. What do you want a medal? Come on. <laughs> Congrats, man. But yeah, uh, mentally, you know, great. I was texting you guys, or uh, I think I was just mentally thinking, how in the world could I do, you know, say like a ten k or something? Because I'm just thinking, how is that possible? It just happens. I, 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 I but I thought the same thing about like sorry. how in the world yeah. I'm doing three miles when yeah. I was struggling with one mile. So I anyways. invented this concept that I like to call baby steps. Oh, okay. And I've never heard of yeah, that. Yeah, it's just like really small increments. And then you just, huh. before you know it, you're like beyond what you thought Josh, you were that's capable amazing. of. You know, yeah. Or I could just tell myself, it's, you can, man. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And I, that would probably help yeah. me out. Look, it, running is the worst, but it makes you a better person. Yeah. Okay, I'm finally in that semi like running hippie. Mm. guy mode where yeah. i'm like this is kind of enjoyable like okay. my run on saturday i did like seven miles it was cool and crisp yeah saturday morning and i just felt good the weather makes a big difference yeah. doesn't it yeah when it's above 85 mm, yeah, it's, no, that's you. bad times. all right what's your news item josh uh let's see i've got two i'm gonna do both because i can do what i go want. for it go all right for so it. the first one is that vinyl this year is on track to outsell CDs. I saw that. For the first time in 30 years, something like that. Thanks, hipsters. Um, yeah, thanks, hipsters. And it's crazy because CDs are like at a stagnant I, I didn't know rate. that. I didn't. If you had told me that they don't sell, they didn't sell one CD last year, I would believe you. Yeah, it's so weird that, yeah, people are still They're buying still CDs. Buy C you can still buy. Where do you buy like, them? Yeah, 247 million dollars what worth of, CDs? of cds like yeah. like audio cds yeah or does it not it's, it's music music wow. cds um yeah and so vinyl's closing in on that it's supposed to probably by the end of the year um i surpass. think there's just enough people out there that want to own their music I, you know and I, mean? I understand that no? yeah. I, I, yeah. I there's a little yeah. piece of me where when i download a song or whatever i don't i just pay for uh, like a subscription now and i'm like i don't own any of this music and right. so if i stop paying for this subscription it's all gone yeah. it's kind of weird I think right there's enough people out there that are weird about that yeah and i like quality music i'm not right. an audiophile but I, I can i have a decent ear that when yeah you download like a, a digital recording a lot of times the fidelity on that right. is just not quite as good i i've never apparently for vinyl like Unless you're spending thousands of dollars, you're really not hearing the depth that vinyl has to offer. That's okay. what I've been told. Um, but yeah, well, this stat blew my mind. The Beatles have sold over 
300,000 vinyl records in 2018. Holy what? cow. The beat, like the they, band that that's not that's no that longer together. Out, when yeah, did they break in the up? Sixties. <laughs> you know what? I think like, it's got to be so people are getting into the vinyl sure. stuff, and so that's just one of those like if you look if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this, that's I gotta own standard, the Beatles yes, record. Yeah. So that I mean that's got to be. And the others uh, like uh, Pink Floyd, David Bowie, Fleetwood Mac, Jimi Hendrix, Queen. They each sold over a hundred thousand vinyl records in 2018 that is crazy it's amazing those groups and people are still making that kind of money or yeah. their, their estates are making that kind of money or they have the ability year. to still they do nothing but they can still yeah, sell this yeah, massive yeah, amount yeah. it's crazy all right what's your what's your other, right, story? other story next kinda, up kind of morbid probably shouldn't cover it okay. you're kind of yeah. Yeah. yeah that's kind of no, big on that you're really <laughs> weird okay we all get it well you may have heard uh in the news just a few days ago uh about a guy who went on vacation with his girlfriend to Tanzania and they stayed in yes. this like luxury resort where one of the rooms is actually underwater. I like read that it was an underwater cabin. cabin. Yeah. yeah. So weird. It's underwater, which I mean that sounds pretty cool. Like you're actually underwater in the ocean, like in your in your bedroom. Well, um, dude, like he really liked his girlfriend and he liked her so much that he was gonna propose to her. And he did. He uh Went outside. She was in the bedroom. He went outside into the and he went outside dove, underwater. Dove into the water. Yeah. Swam down to the bedroom window with a proposal letter inside of like a clear sheet thing. Yep. And held it against the window, and it said something to the effect of. You're amazing. Will you marry me? Like I'm holding my, I'd hold my breath. I can't hold. It was something like I can't can't hold hold my my breath breath long enough to tell you. Stop laughing, Josh. Don't laugh. (laughs) This is horrible. But uh, anyway, she never got to answer. Well, she answered on you know like I don't know what platform. Okay, so let me tell you what happened. He died. Uh, news flash. He did not. He drowned. Well, they didn't. They didn't say what happened no. to it. Like some obviously he drowned because de- it was confirmed that died they of did drowning. Pull right? a body out of the water. He drowned. Okay. And this might not be weird, and everyone grieves differently. But like she posted like a very long Facebook post that said, "Yes, yeah, a million she, times. Yes, right. I would have." said yes if you had super drowned. sad and totally unbelievable yeah. like how could that happen i'm not making fun of it this is just blowing my mind it is a crazy that's situation super creative it is i mean i didn't know you could you could I stay in a cabin sure you were, i thought for sure you're going to tell me he got attacked by a shark oh, or something maybe that, that could have been be that nuts. see that's what i'm saying we don't know what happened because they didn't disclose yeah, all the exactly details can't be disclosed or okay that's messed disclosed. up that's, we'll, we'll follow up on this that's if we messed up i am interested super sad obviously sad and interesting yeah so, All right. That was uh, some good news stories there, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, All right. Let's get into the topic today. Power tools, guys. Mm, power tools. Mm, power yes, tools. power tools. So basically, we're just going to talk about some of our favorite power tools. So we've come to the table with, uh, I, I guess we each three. Had, we each have three, three each. Right. Uh, because, you know, you you guys have heard us talk about basic tool sets. We've done shows like that in the past, just starting from zero. But obviously, you're going to want to advance and get into more power tools. And so we just want to give you guys our thoughts on some of the power tools that we find really, really useful. These are the loves of our lives, yes. right? In terms of power tools. Yeah, there exactly. You and there, there, you know, there's going to be tons more than this, but we're going to try to narrow it down just a little bit. Okay. I'm so, Let's do it. Who wants to go first? Oh, me, me, me. Dave. All right. So number one on my list. We'll just... Each give one at a time. Number three. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We'll, okay. go, we'll go around the go. table. Number three on my Good list. Go, but yeah, going from... Number uh, three. Thank you. Is my Dremel. I use my Dremel. I'm not going to say I use it every day because I, I don't. I don't even use it every week. But every time I use it, I'm like, how did we survive without Dremels way back in the day? Let They're me, so useful. Let me ask which Dremel. Like, there's the standard Dremel with, like, the tip on it. And then there's this new Dremel everyone has that is the has the flat blade. It's like a flush cut design uh, on it. I think that's just an attachment, is it not? No, it's not. Well, so I'm, it's, I'm, it's I'm in the market. I'm in the market for one. So I'll go, I'll check out your recommendations. Cause mine, I was going off, I was using one that I got for uh, a company I used to work for my five year anniversary. Wow. Okay. Uh, they gave me, they, 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 well, they hand you a catalog and they're like, you can pick something out of this catalog. <laughs> was it a, was it a Dremel brand Dremel? Negative. Okay. It was an off brand. Uh, 
That's a problem. It is a problem. It was an off brand, but it got the job done. Okay. And I mean, you can drill with it. OK, you can like miter cut things. You can polish you things. You can engrave. You can engrave with it. You can do anything with a Dremel. They're so useful. Yeah, I, I have a Dremel. I've used uh, probably two of the 30 bazillion attachments. So real, real yeah. quick, we should clarify what a Dremel is for people out there who don't know. It is a handheld uh, tool, obviously, that's either battery powered or you plug it in and it spins the tip of it spins really, really quickly. And so but it's for detail work. It's for detail work, um, like freehand detail work. Yes. And so you uh, it, you can buy hundreds and hundreds of different attachments that go on the end of it. You know, little uh, drill bits, things that you cut Sanders, with, like cutting wheels. Files, yeah, you can sand, yeah. you can do anything with a Dremel. They're fantastic. Okay, that's a that's a strong. Yeah, one. I have a Dremel, and it's weird because I don't use it a whole lot. That's I, what I'm saying. I don't use it all the time, but when I do use it, I'm like, man, this. There's nothing else that I need to like. This is getting the job done. Yeah, hundred percent. I will say Dremel, and I and I'm trying to think if I had a um, an experience with an off brand. But the Dremel, That's all I know. The Dremel brand is it's solid because it's got the adjust. Mine, at least mine, has yep. the adjustable Variables. speed, mm -hmm. variable speed, and it's just solid. You can crank that thing up, and you're like, dang, this thing's got some power. Do you ever get nervous when you crank it up, and you're like, what if something goes wrong? Because they like they really get going, and their mine was an off brand, so it was really loud and. Uh, Kind of scared. I've had me when an I crank angle grinder accident before, so I'm not really <laughs> scared of the Dremel. I had a I had an angle grinder just come out of my hands. That can, that's a hospital attack, visit. Attack my forearm. <laughs> Whoa, really? Yeah, Dang. it's pretty bad. Yikes. Oh, show idea. We'll we'll do uh, like dangerous tools, like the most dangerous. Oh yeah, tools. watch, uh, watch out for this. Grinder, yeah. Look, an angle grinder with a steel brush. Yeah, attachment on it. It's bad. That's, That's pretty a bad dangerous because I've gotten um, the little things that will come off of the steel brush Ooh. thing, and I'll just get and I'll embed in your skin. Ooh. You got to wear eye protection with that. For yeah. Sure. All right, Josh. What's uh, me? Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna go with because I recently got one secondhand. A backpack blower, a gas yes. powered backpack blower. Man, I was living the plug-in electric Dude. blower life, and it, it changed my life. Like, I mean, I blow almost every time now that I cut my grass, I blow off the driveway. And the you patio, didn't do that before, animal. Not every time, animal. Dragging around the extension cord. It's That's what such I'm. Yeah. A problem. About what? What brand do you can, go with? Um, Echo. Yeah, got to. Yeah, I got it secondhand from a professional landscaper. Oh, okay. Uh, my cousin. Yeah, I can even go up on my deck, blow it off, because there's no outlets up there. Right. So I never, I just got No, we got all know. They're fantastic. They're fantastic. So, and I, I mean, you can use it out. I blow pine cones out of my lawn, like just to clear. And I mean, it is, that was a game changer for me. Yeah. And Tim, you, you have even more uses with your gas powered back. Well, I have the, blower. the uh, pest control sprayer. So it's, it's a steel backpack blower that has a tank on it. Now the um, extension of the hose does it go steel down? Steel brand, right? Steel, sorry, yep. sorry, steel brand. S T I H L. Uh, but I use that as a blower as well. It's just not as effective as a dedicated blower. But I still use so it it's, as that. it's actually designed for pest control. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, seems That's like it works perfectly well for blowing. blowing yeah, leaves I mean it does. It steel. Does, did you mortgage your house to pay for that thing? Those are nice. Dude, I mean, those are really nice. Look, if you're in. You can go back to our very first episode, Dave, and listen to our pest control I episode. Should, I should do that. <laughs> which is not a very good episode, but oh, you go to youcanman.com slash pest. You That's can, one of the best articles on the internet. You can uh, check control. out what I do for pest control. And if you're the person that's going to pay for professional service for mosquito control, it will more than pay Ooh, for itself yes. over control. even one yeah. summer. So I went ahead and bought that a couple of years. I back. can I can t I, I can testify to that because I pay for uh, mosquito. Control. So in y'all's families for mosquitoes. So again, Dave, I have that, <laughs> yeah. and you're welcome to borrow it anytime. I appreciate that. Are you the one that suffers from mosquito bites? Because I am like not. Every family has. I'm immune. One person that gets mosquito bites, and the other person doesn't get mosquito bites. So my, my bites. wife gets. She gets matched. Up she like gets that. ed up. Okay, when she goes outside, and I've tried to cancel the subscription or whatever before, and she's like, "Nope, this is not <laughs> happening." Because I'm good. When I go out there, I'm good. Yeah, uh, but she's not. 
There's a great YouTube video. Won't go into it. There's a guy who there is there is science around that based on yes, it's genetic. blood. It's blood type. It's not blood type. I've it's, heard that it's blood type. It's not, but it's genetic. I believe that it, it is, is a genetic. Yeah, D- uh, mosquitoes. They've done tests, like double blind tests, where mosquitoes will consistently go towards certain people's pheromones. I give her a hard time. I'm like, okay, you're making it up. But (laughs) maybe there's science behind it. Yeah, I'm the person that doesn't get bit either. Okay, so we got to mosquitoes from blowers. Yeah. Just Okay, just wanted to circle back around there. Sam, what's what's, what's number three on your list, Jim? Okay, sorry. Look, you got to have a miter saw. (laughs) I love my miter saw. Uh, actually, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back. I don't like my miter saw at all. <laughs> you I, like the idea of a miter saw. I like saw. the idea of a miter saw. I hate my miter saw. Because you bought it from Look, look <laughs> Arbor <right>. Freight. <laughs> Arbor Freight. <laughs> but look, I mean, it it does the job. It gets the job. This done. is what I you said. You paid less than seven hundred dollars. Your yeah. your compound miter saw is better than mine because I don't have one. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I have a 12 inch sliding double compound miter saw i think it is because mm-hmm. you know it'll flip both from ways. side both ways side to side i whenever i'm talking about that miter saw i basically describe it as it's for cuts you don't really care about i was gonna say it's <laughs> great for framing <laughs> yeah exactly doing framing it, for framing, framing you just did, yeah but it's kind of overkill for framing so i mean how is. often am i doing double, you know compound yeah. <laughs> miter cuts with yeah, framing right it's usually just like one cut sure straight you know, 90 degree, whatever, whatever you want to yeah. call that. But I've done trim with it. You know, it just, there's a you lot just got to use a lot more, a lot, of lot more caulk. Yeah. You're it. eyeballing I mean, it big time with, with, with that one, right? Yeah. It's just not accurate. So I do want to invest in a really nice miter saw, but for now the, the Harbor Freight one's doing just fine. And if, if that's going to keep you from doing a project, go to Harbor Freight and get one. I've used it a ton and it's, it's been, it's been fine, yeah. but I, I have had issues with it, but I use that for all kinds of stuff, trim, framing, everything you got. Miter saw is a must. Yeah. And if you do, if you're doing a lot of framing, especially crown molding, you, that double miter saw, the dual bevel, is the dual bevel. That's the term we're looking for. Now, now concerning that I did buy an attachment that Craig tools makes four crown molding that you i think they just call it the crown jig or something okay. like that and you put that on the miter saw and it makes those cuts a lot easier so just for future reference guys if you need that yeah uh, Tim's got it. it's easy to get all turned around when you're cutting crown molding no doubt yeah i, I went with a middle of the road single bevel dewalt miter saw yeah that's going to be solid good. it's good but there's still like when i try to do real fine detail work there's still enough play just like in the blade itself where, would you say it ain't cutting it there you go <laughs> <laughs> um yeah there's still just enough play in there where it's not quite quite perfect so you really if you want like top of the line you got to pay top of the line yeah. dollars all right dave what's your next one too. next up on my list is kind of boring but it's it is a workhorse for me is my makita handheld drill i use it all the time it has never failed me it's worked for now we years say drill or driver or both it, it's a drill it's not a driver it's not an impact driver okay. it's just a drill Standard i mean it, drill. it, it does drill. everything well, it would be it would be called a drill driver but it's not impact right yeah. it is a cord okay. yeah it's a cordless drill uh it, it's like i said it's uh, i believe it's a makita it's fantastic it I mean, it is bulletproof. Mm. I can't kill the thing. The batteries have lasted for, I think it's six years now. I've wow. got two batteries. It's fantastic. I love Makitas it. Makitas are highly rated. What I like about those of us around this table, you're into Makita. Yep. I went basically full Milwaukee okay. on my power, on my Rich. cordless I'm power about to stuff. switch. Tim is a craftsman guy now. Where are you going? No. I, I think Freight. I might be. No. He's going, you going to Walt? You're Look, going to Walt. <laughs> Harbor Freight. I, I love, y'all know I love Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has its role in this world. It does. But I can't I can't go battery operated with Harbor Freight. No, not not going to do it. Not from China. I do. Th- I think I'm probably going to go Milwaukee, actually. Okay. Yeah. The more and more I research about it, I think. Uh, yeah, a lot of the guys. Yeah, a lot of the guys I follow on Instagram, uh, I think Keystone Carpenter, he's going to correct me. He's Makita. I think he prefers me. He's tried them all. all it's because he's smart have. and he listens to me. Uh, but I think our our buildings, Kyle Stumpenhorst, he's full Milwaukee. He's and these two guys man. that Josh is just mentioning, we had mentioned on our show, our, our favorite, favorite follows. Yes. So these guys are big on Instagram. They're builders. 
And so that's what Josh is talking well, about. Yeah, those guys are pros. But in my opinion, if you go DeWalt, Milwaukee, or Makita, you're not going to make a mistake. No, those, no those, you'll be those, fine. Those three if, brands yeah, are... If you're not a contractor, it's good stuff. totally fine. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. Is it my turn? Or you it's your turn. Yes, go yeah. for it. Okay. Um, this second one, this is really embarrassing. I, I mean, I say a lot of embarrassing things on this show, but Accurate. this is a tool that... It's a tool I should definitely have, and I don't. And it, but it, I need it all the time. But my buddy Tim lets me borrow his. It's a circular saw, dude. That is so come basic. on, man. I didn't know you didn't step own up one. your game. I don't. Own, Do you currently have my circular saw? I have its container. <laughs> so I found that the other day. All right. Well, you can you can put my Makita circular saw in that container if you need to. So no, I, got, I got one you can borrow. Okay. Is it corded? Or yeah, it, it's corded. Okay, I think I'm going to go cordless. I would go cordless. But they're expensive. It's like 108 I can get one on eBay for like 89 Pro tip, if you go on eBay, if you're looking for just a tool itself to go with your cordless tool bundles, Home Depot will sell those bundles yep. in, in, in like six packs for like 700 bucks for, you know, a rigid or whatever right. um, tool set. And the online retailers will, or some people will only like choose certain tools out of them and just never use the other ones. Yep. They'll split these up. They'll split them up and sell them. Oh. So like eBay will have, I bought a Sawzall this way, a Milwaukee Sawzall. They'll just have the tool itself for like half of what Home Depot is selling nice. the tool itself Yeah, because for. usually all that stuff is bundled together where it's like, well, I don't want the, I don't want the stupid light. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. but that's and all the, I can. And at the price point, someone can buy that and then parse it out, right? And make a little money. And come I guess. ahead, yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to I'm going to try to look on eBay. They just came out. Uh, RR Buildings had one. Milwaukee sent him one. Uh, must be nice. And uh, one day he had like a worm. They have a worm drive circular saw yeah. with with the cordless. Action, nice. So. That's nice. Circular saw. Favorite, some favorite tool that I don't that you have. don't own. <laughs> All right, well, you know, one of mine was an impact driver, but that's so closely related to what Dave mentioned. It, yeah, but it's that's a different tool. Yeah, I love the impact driver when I'm doing framing. Tim, explain an impact driver. Okay, so it's basically just like a drill, but it has a an, it has like a the hammering best? effect. It has a hammering right? a hammering yep. effect is the best way to say it. And so it's uh, essentially it's just got more power. It's just got more torque to be driving in screws. So when I'm doing framing, I almost exclusively use screws instead of nails. Just I don't know. That's just what I do. You're not working in volume. You yeah, can do it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So smaller projects, I use screws. That way I can take stuff back apart. If I screw something up, when so you that. screw something, when up. I screw something up, <laughs> that is nice. And That's so an nice impact feature. driver is, man, it's so, so useful. I don't own one either. I'm kind of embarrassed, uh, but I need one. I need you one in my life. Own you one. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Cause usually it's that's like me not owning a circular saw. Usually that's a very uh, common combo. So if you're looking at getting a combo, you want to look for one that has both a drill driver. Yep. And an impact That's driver. That's a good combo. I agree. Perfect combo for for starting out on a on a system. So like if you don't want to spend the full seven hundred or whatever, and you don't need the circular saw, you don't need the sawzall or whatever yeah. right now, but you do need those drills. That that's the combo you want. And Christmas is it right around the corner? Those go on deep discount around Christmas. The paired up ladies. That's when I always have gotten mine. Yep. Um. And yes, and you don't have to go like big brand either. If you don't have, if you're starting from zero, Ryobi is a perfectly acceptable entry level drill driver. Set. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right, Dave. Okay, number one on my list, far and away, it's not even close. Is my Echo Edger. Mm. Okay, I have an Echo Trimmer. I have an Echo Edger. The Edger. You have a trimmer and an Edger? I do. And I'll tell you why. Because I used, I, I got so good with the trimmer. This So a trimmer is basically a weed eater, right? A weed whacker down Weed here. whacker. Come on. <laughs> uh, so I used my trimmer to edge my, I'm big on edging the yard. Every time I cut my yard, I'm edging it. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Now, I, I would I would say if, if you don't have time to cut and you have like a part, there's going to be a party, you have people coming over. Edge your yard, and that is a quick way to dress up your yard if you don't have time to cut it. But anyway, I used to use my trimmer to edge, and I would catch stuff like in the eye all the time. Yeah, there's a lot of shrapnel. I get stuff in the face, like it was not fun. I'd have battle scars. So I got the 
dedicated edger that has the metal blade that spins around. It has a guard, so it keeps you from, you know, being in the line of fire. That thing is, it, it runs like a top every time. I'll, I'll put it in the shed for the winter. Won't do anything to winterize it. Cranks up every time. It's, it's great. I love it. Hmm. That's a good one. I've, uh, I bought this attachment yep. for my trimmer, and I can't think of the name of it. Um, we'll post it when I find it, but, uh, it's, it's like a big disc. I was, I was about to buy that cause it was, it was significantly cheaper than just, I think that was like 60 or 70 or $80. And then the, the actual edger is like $200, but I know. All right. So the way that I bought it was, you know how you go to home Depot sometimes and they have the tools outside that people have brought back and you get it for like, you know, 30% discounts. That's how I got that one. I walked by it. I was like, Ooh, been looking at that one. Yeah. Yeah. It worked the out. Separate. It was a good buy. Se- Echo's good. It's, you said Echo? Echo, yeah. Echo's, they're very reliable. Uh, yeah. Gas powered tools. Love it. All right, Josh. All right. Are you? My last one. I just used it today. I used it on a bunch of framing at my in-law's cabin. A rigid, it's a rigid, it doesn't have to be rigid, but a framing nailer. It was my first oh, framing nailer. Nice. I've owned Brad nailers up to this point, you know, for any trim work, a lot of You have my stuff. Brad nailer, don't you? I do. I have your I have your cord cordless one. Yes. yes. Have I borrowed your your Josh your oh, yes. framing nailer well, or your Brad nailer? Your Brad Brad nailer. Yeah, yeah, I've never used your framing nailer. Yeah, frame nailer. That's frame legit. Nailer uses real it can shoot real nails. Yeah, uh, which is nice. And yeah, I mean it's just it's so powerful and fast and yeah. you got to get a nail. I don't have a nailer. I need one in my life. It's it's powerful. I mean it's heavy. You really feel like you're getting stuff done. Yep. And yeah, it made that screen that I put up super fast nice nice uh my last one would be a sawzall yes that's that was yeah. on my or list that's a, like the do it all obviously a sawzall, sawzall all. or a reciprocating yes. saw yep. would be another name for it so let you guys know it's just basically a, a blade that's sticking out of the well. <laughs> it looks like a gun but it has a yeah. blade coming yeah. out and, and you the, pull that trigger and just yeah, the blade right? just goes back and forth yeah uh, and there's metal blades there's wood blades i'm mostly using the wood blade when i and am doing hybrid blade too that's this is true <laughs> when i'm doing uh demo work yep so if i'm taking out a load-bearing wall and i'm cu- and i need to cut through wood and nails i'm i'm bringing out the sawzall yeah Yep. Um, because it's, you know, you can get in to tighter spaces with the Sawzall. Sure. And if you have a longer blade, you can also do that as well. And so I use the Sawzall all the time. Yeah, it's not it's not for delicate work. It's for no. rough cuts. But man, it makes quick work of a lot of stuff. I, I've tried to use a Sawzall on something that I needed to <laughs> kind of, <laughs> yeah, cut straight. And I'm like, and you know, you talk it yourself into out. it. You're like. Yeah, I, I can I can do this. I watched Josh. I go saw th- Tom Silva do this. <laughs> yeah, and so can, you could do it. I can do this. You can, man. You know, uh, Tom Silva is funny because he'll do. A, I've seen him do a thing where he uses a sawzall on one 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 part of the wall, and and he doesn't touch the other drywall yes. on the other side. Does <laughs> that, that make is sense? Advanced. Yes. And I'm like, he can cut out drywall and framing on one side and leave the drywall on the other exactly. side untouched. On the, Extremely the impressive. <laughs> I'm like, how do you do that, Tom? Josh? I watched you go through an electrical box with with a sawzall. Really? Yeah. And you took out power to the whole room. Oh, I it's cut. Like, dude, I cut really? wires. Yeah. I cut cool. wires at your house, Josh. Remember? Oh yeah. I cut right through some wires <laughs> with my sawzall yeah. at your house. Well, because you don't, you can't see behind the wall. All right, I mean, yeah. to your uh, coming I in think your defense, that, I think that circuit was already dead, but yes. still, yeah, like, I did. I kind of did that too in my in-laws' cabin basement. I was using detecting the sawzall, a pattern here, and uh, I didn't cut through anything, but I bumped. I was Ooh. I was cutting out an old junk, an old box, an yeah. old switch box, just breaking it loose from the stud. So I was just trimming. And I just pulled the saw out of the wall too early, and the wall, the saw was still oh, pumping yes. a little bit, and it, it 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 jerked over and hit the box, and just caused two wires to touch, and uh, power, you know, circuit blew or the breaker blew. Yep, power goes out. Oh, okay. everyone's standing around is like, oh my gosh, what did you? You're like, like, I got it, I yeah, got it. I didn't break it. One last thing about saws, uh, saws, saws is the blades really do matter a ton. Yes. Yep. Cheap blades, don't do it. Pay up. Okay, pay up and get you some nice ones because they're going to last a lot longer. Milwaukee, 
make some really, really solid uh, yes. falls all blades. Yes, they do. For sure. Okay, I think that about wraps it up. Of course, you know, this is a You Can Man show, so we're always going to be talking about power tools. Yeah. But we just want to kind of give a rundown of some of our favorite power tools. So hopefully you uh, you guys have found some useful information on this. And we will, of course, be posting about all this on youcanman.com. Josh, I think. No, no, no. Dave yes, has it's a my segment. week. Dave's week. Dave yeah. has a segment this week. Get ready. All right. We will be back after the break. This episode is sponsored by 1776 United. 1776 United is a patriotic and historically inspired lifestyle brand. They make the best patriotic shirts and apparel on the market today. I personally own many of their products, and if you want to don patriotic gear without looking gaudy, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and at 1776united.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Dave, it's your week. What you got for us, man? This week, my segment, we're wrapping up part three of Not Blade Banter. Okay, right. so we this is my three-part series. Uh, we've had parts one and two. This is part three, so we're closing it out. Everybody's probably pretty happy about that. Give us that. a recap. Of recap. One, so, I'm thinking you could extend this indefinitely. I, listen, I could talk about this all night and into tomorrow without any problem. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we'll talk about it in the future, but... Part one of Not Blade Banter, if you if you haven't listened, you need to go back and listen, but I'll give you a quick preview. Part one was we were talking about knife locks, so folding knife locks, all the different types of knife locks. Part two was on blade steels. So if you don't know, when you buy a knife, there are a lot of different blade steels that it could come in. And in the hot higher end, uh, on the higher end knives, there are uh, very specific blade steels that they use, and they all matter, and they all have different properties like edge retention some have really good edge retention some have really good corrosion resistance lots of different it's like um, sawzall blades the the blade matters yes the blade does matter so part three we're kind of bringing it all together and i am ranking my top five pocket knives they're not my top five but they're not my top five but they are the top five knives that i think that the you can man army needs to go out and purchase you can purchase any one of these five and you'll be good to go okay so all things considered, these are the best all-around pocket knives, in my opinion. Are you guys ready? I am I'm, so ready. I'm really ready. So I, I, Are you going to tell us how much these cost? I, you know what? I actually uh, I, I looked all that up, and so I am going to give you general price points, actually very specific price okay, points. Okay, to let our listeners know, Dave has all of these knives laid out on the table. Yes, I do. Okay, uh, well, let's get a picture of this so we can post we it We got to get knives. a picture. Um, this year. We'll, we'll do it after, but yeah, we'll, we'll get a picture of this so you, you guys can see it. Okay, so we're going to start at the bottom. Number five on the list. I actually don't own this knife. I asked Josh to bring it tonight. I'm honored that I'm even in consideration. There, you, you owned one that he... Yeah. Oh, wow. So there, there, yeah, this is number Dave, five. why didn't you ask me, man? Well, I thought about <laughs> asking you, Tim, but your, your knife, you can barely open it. Josh doesn't use his, so it's in primo condition. Yeah. But this is... This, right, so this is the CRKT... Pilar, 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 Pilar. Pilar. Uh, it's a fantastic pocket knife. Like I said, I don't own this one, but I'm going to own it. And Ooh. and the reason that it's number five on my list, the reason it made the list is the price point. You can get into one of these for 30 bucks. That's why I own it. That, thing, that thing looks dirty. I mean, that dirty almost, in a good way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like this will get into some, Well, that's that's why I like it. It's inexpensive. It's high quality like and it's it is built like a tank. So it's a small pocket knife, but it's built like a tank. It has a lot of heft to it. And when it opens up, it feels like it locks like a bank vault. It's uh, just mm. a really good. It's kind of got that like bull nose. So it's called a sheep's foot, oh, a okay. sheep's foot blade. Oh. Very useful. Also kind of a safe blade shape because it's not really pointy. So anyway, uh, great knife. I'm going to run it through my own gut. Yeah, so uh, anywhere from $30 to $50. I would recommend the $50 option. It's the D2 blade steel, which is a, a little bit of a... Oh, didn't know that was an option. Yeah, that is an option. It's a little bit nicer. Okay, so that's number five. Number four is the ZT or the Zero Tolerance 0450. This is a fantastic pocket oh, I like knife. That. I like that sound there. Yeah, so this could easily be number one on the list, but the price point, uh, I think, keeps it off of, uh, from being number one, it's 188 bucks. Okay, Ooh. so you're it's really- a lot for a knife. Yeah, it is not into knives. <laughs> it is a lot for a knife. The, the great thing about Zero Tolerance or ZT is 
I say bang for the buck, but you're still spending a lot of money. But this, they really make fantastic pocket knives. The quality control, just the build quality is out of this world. They're really, really, really nice pocket knives. So this one kind of disappears in the pocket. It's slim. Uh, it's pretty light. And it's uh, it's just a really solid knife. So that's the ZT0450. Check it out. Number four. So that was uh, uh, that was number four. Number three on the list is the Spyderco Delica. Okay, Spyderco makes fantastic pocket knives, and the reason that I like this one is because it's it comes in at a pretty um, attractive price point. It's what, about seventy eight bucks. Okay. So you know that's kind of a still a, reasonable. It's an easier pill to swallow. Okay, it's not a cheap pocket knife. It's built really, really well. It's got a is back, that, is got that a handle arm. steel? Or it's plastic? not steel. So this is uh, FR fiber reinforced nylon. So basically okay. plastic. But it's done really well. Uh, it's made by a really good company, Spider Co. And a, a good thing about this one is it's on the smaller side. It's legal in a lot of places. So it's under the blade is under three inches long. That's kind of the cutoff for. Tell me where things would be illegal. Um, well, like, it, it's usually for most places based on blade length. Are you talking like airports or states? States. So really? like New York City has the, the oh, most that's restrictive the worst place. Come it has on. very restrictive knife oh, laws. Knives. Yeah. Georgia is great because you can basically carry any kind of knife that yeah. you want. And yeah. which, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, makes sense. But there are places that are very restrictive. California and New York City are the are the uh, most restrictive. And it's, it's too bad. Most of the time comes down to blade length. Well, so, there's no crime in New York City. So. Yeah. So <laughs> they've got it figured out. But any for, for the most part, if you're under three inches, then you're illegal in a lot of places. So interesting. That's the good thing even, about the wouldn't even cross my mind. Yeah, you get if Ugh. you they and they'll 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 hit you up mm. in uh, in New York. Mm. So anyway, mm. the Spider Co Delica comes into number three. Number two is another Spider Co knife, and I I went back and That's forth. That's a heavy duty knife, guys. I could not decide, but the the Spider Co Paramilitary Two. <laughs> yeah. Is, That's nice. This would be number one on my list, but the size, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit bigger. And for, I fly a desk that can all day. fit in your whole hand. I mean, that's like this, full hand it length. It fills yeah. up the hand. And if I, fl- I mean, if I pop this thing out at work, people would freak out. Okay. So you that's, can't. That's like a knife fight. If I were a, if I were a police officer, if I were an EMT, a firefighter, if I were in the military, this would be my number one knife because mm. it, it's just so fantastic. It. A lot of people consider this to be the best all-around pocket knife on the planet. The wow. Spyderco Paramilitary 2, you can get into one for 140 bucks. I could see you cutting through some uh, seat belts You can do some work if with this, this knife. My first thought at that price point is like, if you, like for your dad, like a really special birthday gift or your husband or your wife, if she's into knives. Anyway, this seems Everybody like a, needs a pocket knife. That, pri- that price point, I feel like at Christmas, people could easily spend that money on total junk that no one would want. But that is like a quality item. It, it will last forever. It's, I mean, $150 is $150. So it's not cheap, but it's not an out of this world price point. And uh, it's, it's going to last forever. It is a fantastic tool. I think most people aren't going to want one that large though, you think? It's true. So it's there's, true. they just came out recently with the, uh, with the PM3, which is the, I'm not going to say a more modern up, uh, updated version. It's a, it's a shrunken down version of this. It's I mean, what's, knife, what's the total, smaller. what's the total length of that? Probably seven inches or more. Probably about seven inches overall. The blade I think is like three and a quarter, three and a half inches, something like that. If, if you pick this up, you'd be like, that's a pretty big pocket knife. Yes. Um, yeah. I carried this in my pocket for years and didn't have any problems with it in terms of the size of it, but it is a little bit bigger. So that's number two, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Number one on the list is the Benchmade 940. Nice. All of all of the knife people out there rejoice. That looks it has a very classic look. So this yeah, has a class. All right. So I said earlier that the price point of one of them kept them from being number one. That was the ZT it was 188 bucks. This one is very expensive as well. $175. These are all retail prices. If you buy them uh, on the secondary market, like I do for most of them, you get them a lot cheaper. So it's $175. This is the greatest pocket knife ever created by man. It is. And fit. what's the uh, lock type? On so this that? is the Axis lock. It is, uh, I believe, trademarked by Benchmade. They came up with the Axis lock and it's just a super intuitive uh, knife lock to use. Is that the knife that you handed me on the first segment? Yes. yes. You said, and the reason that I like the axis lock, I said, because it's very intuitive. If you hand this to a non knife person, they know how to open and close it. Yeah. A lot of knives, when you hand them to non knife people, they don't know how to mm-hmm. operate them. This one, 
super intuitive, but it's really slim. It's very light. And it's what I like about it is it's non intimidating. When you pull this yeah. out in a, if you pull this out in a meeting and people who don't carry knives see it, it's not really it scary looks looking. It almost distinguished. It is distinguished. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit funny looking, but it is, it's just a fantastic, fantastic pocket knife. It does everything well and uh, it's really good to go. What so was that's, the price point on that? You're at about $175 for the Benchmade 940. So that's a chunk of change, granted, uh, but it uh, is money well spent in my opinion. All right, and that was that was a good segment, and thank you for making me feel good about my purchase, dude. The the my CRKT <laughs> Pilar or Pilar, it's a great knife at thirty dollars. You everybody just go the out and buy the loan of that knife feels like thirty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it I is. think I might, I think I might have to. It's uh, a great step blade. Into that, I'm gonna sneak up on one as well because I don't have one. Nice. I'll send all right. that one to you for yeah, well, I will post, of course, uh, links to all these on our blog posts. We always do show notes on youcanman.com. Yeah, so check definitely. those out, guys. Like a lot of uh, just to um, toot Tim's horn here, like a lot of blogs are just junky and clunky and like ugly. And Tim just puts together beautiful blog posts that are recaps of our episodes and they have links uh to all of our products that we mentioned on the show it's super well done it's a nice looking site don't don't skip it because you know a lot of podcasts have show notes and it's just almost like a transcript of the show or whatever these are really this really is usable well done. yes yep. usable and readable yeah i try i try, I try my best you do a nice. good job tim so nice Decent job. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. As always, check out our show notes at youcanman.com. Check out our Facebook page and our group page. Uh, if you got a question that you want uh, the community input on, that's the place to do it. Check out our Instagram page, and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>